Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Graham from Castle Cameras and today I want to talk to you about the brand new Canon EOS R. Yesterday I attended the rather bonkers launch event. Check this out. Uh, I said, two hours. Find Catherine Doyle. Capture the future. Now, all the craziness aside, I did manage to get some decent hands-on time with the camera, so I'll go through and I'll share a few images and a bit of video that I shot yesterday with you shortly. I'll give you my first impressions and uh, hopefully we'll get the opportunity to do a fuller review later in the month. Now, it's a question we've been asked for so long. It's been anticipated by professionals and enthusiasts alike. When is Canon going to bring out a full-frame mirrorless camera? Well, the wait is over. I mean, obviously, this is an area that Sony have had to themselves for a long time. Lots of Canon users have either bought an A7 III to add to their existing system with the MC11 Sigma adapter, or, you know, they've just sat there and waited it out, waited to see what Canon will uh, release. Now... I'm pleased to say, I think, after using it your bit of yesterday, these users are not going to be disappointed. There, it isn't perfect. There are a few things that uh, perhaps aren't on the camera or that are missing that people would have liked to have seen, but I'm sure we'll see that in a future version. But what I will say is this felt like a very mature product. So let's run through a few of the specs. First of all, it's got an all-new sensor, 30.3 megapixels, so a really healthy high megapixel count. They've gone for a single 30 megapixel sensor. Now this makes some sense to me because uh, rather than you know that calling it two cameras, you haven't decided between the two. They're just saying this is what we advise. And you know 30 megapixels, I'm sure you'll agree, is enough for for most people. Um, but what's really got people talking about this camera is the AF system, uh, 5,655 AF points. Uh, and I'm pleased to say yesterday after using it, uh, it seemed to track, it focused, it never really missed a beat. It is very accurate and very fast, especially in low light. Now the event yesterday I think was orientated all towards low light. Uh, we had lots of low light conditions to shoot in and uh, this camera is rated down to minus 6 EV, which is definitely a unique uh, feature within the camera market so if you're if you're a low light uh, photographer perhaps weddings events gigs this is going to be the camera for you um, with a good healthy ISO range of 100 to 40,000 um, images will certainly look great I mean with the new Digic 8 processor as well noise does seem to be handled well looking at these shots now you can see very little in the way of uh, noise at all uh, and this was very very dark conditions um, the actual handling wise of the body it feels very much like a Canon EOS it's very familiar so if you're moving from a 5D you've got a 5D in your kit bag picking one of these up you're going to know pretty much where you are straight away there's quite a lot of customization available on this camera so you have a front control dial rear control dial and control dials on the new lenses which I'll go on to in a minute but basically they want to really make sure that you can set this camera up exactly how you want it uh, to get the best results um, there's a touch screen as well which is very angle which is awesome I mean it's the first sort of time we've seen this in a in a decent high-level camera from uh, Canon but it makes videography really easy so vloggers uh, and landscape photographers and people that just like shooting in awkward situations having that very angle LCD it's a really useful addition. You also had touch to focus, which I must say worked really well, plus touch to release the shutter as well, which again, pretty cool feature. I really liked it yesterday. Put in the camera up in portrait mode, and I was just clicking away, getting lots of shots. Um, the viewfinder, this is a great. I mean, it's 3.6 million pixels, uh, but it's big, it's bright, 100% coverage and there was really no lag at all. It did not feel like an electronic viewfinder. It's probably one of the, probably one of the most well-developed electronic viewfinders I've used, um, right up there with the G9, certainly. Very, very good. Um, videographers, they've been thought about, but perhaps probably not with the full bevy of features that people were hoping for. 
does have 4K, um, but we're shooting 4K at 30 frames per second. It does record 4K internally, uh, straight to the memory card, uh, but you, you have an all I and IPB, as you've probably come accustomed to uh, in other Canon models, and the, the 4K all I mode shoots up to 480 me megabits per second in a full 208 bit color space. So pretty decent, but it does offer 422 10-bit out via the HDMI port. Um, but yes, I mean, I, I guess a lot of people may have been hoping for 4K at 60 frames per second. Maybe that's something we'll see in a future model, I don't know. And 60 frames per second in 1080p as well. Hope You know, I guess people would have been hoping for 120. But, I mean, it's still really decent specs. And looking at this video here, you can say it looks pretty decent. So, it's not just all about the features on the camera. A big part of uh, what Canon have been talking about is the lens mount. So this new RF lens mount takes Canon squarely into the future. It's, a, it's the same size as the old EOS mount at 54mm, um, 1mm smaller than the new Nikon Z mount, um, but a very short flange distance of just 20mm. And uh, the big feature that Canon were really keen to express to us was this 12-pin configuration for uh, more points of data transfer with a shorter distance between the points to the sensor. So uh, they're basically saying, you know, critical microseconds of data transfer, um, having that advantage over the current system to, to make things like autofocus performance and metering, all this great stuff a lot quicker. So, I mean, we'll see how that develops in the future, but they're really being mindful uh, about the future and, and talking about producing some really spectacular lenses that they may not have been able to produce before. On the subject of lenses, they've come in with four brand new lenses uh, with the with the R system. Um, one of them, the first one, I did use quite extensively. I'll show you a few shots here. This was the 24 to 105 f4. So this is going to be the standard kit lens. Uh, this is an L series lens, uh, and it will be bundled with the uh, with the EOS R if you desire a lens option. And uh, I must say, you know, the first part of the day I was shooting away with it pretty low light conditions again and it really handled everything well focus quick uh, nice to have that range it's a range that a lot of Canon shooters are very familiar with uh, after that I was lucky enough to get my hands on the 50 mil 1.2 look at this thing it's a beast it's big heavy but it's awesome I mean if you can handle the unwieldy size and weight it produces some spectacular results just take a look at these I was blown away by the shallow depth of field. I mean, it's 1.2. We've seen it before, but this really has smooth fall off, smooth transition. And uh, I'm sure this is going to be an absolute uh, must for a lot of people, although it is quite expensive coming in at just over two grand. Uh, the other lens in the lineup, uh, apart from the uh, the two I've just mentioned, we have uh, the 35mm 1.8 macro lens. Now this isn't an L series lens, this is uh, more of a standard lens. It's coming in at uh, around about £550-£560. And uh, this is going to be a, a great lens for not just macro work, but also just sort of an everyday walk around kind of street photography lens. I didn't get a chance to try one yesterday, but it was one that I was hoping for. I do like street photography. I think this is going to be a great... Uh, a great option for the EOS R. Uh, I would have liked to have seen it and I can't wait to see the cameras uh, in the future so I can have a go with it. But uh, finally, the big lens, the one that everybody's been talking about, unfortunately I did not get to try it out yesterday, but it's the 28 to 70 mil F2. Uh, now this thing is huge. Uh, it looked pretty big, but I must say the, the the results that I've seen online, it does look spectacular. And they were very much making a point that as it's an f2 continuous aperture throughout the range it, it's designed really to replace free prime lenses in most people's kit bags so uh, they're really sort of saying that it is sharp enough it is decent enough it's going to give amazing results all in one lens that will replace free primes in your bag so uh, coming in at just over three thousand pounds it's very expensive but if it does what they say on the tin replacing free prime lenses it's actually quite a cost effective option I guess for L series glass anyway. Um, so yeah, a good bevy of lenses, but of course they're very much talking about this being a system camera. Uh, and with that, they have produced a new lens mount uh, adapter. So you have the standard one, which is gonna come bundled with the camera, whether you buy it with a lens or not. And that's the straight uh, 
RF to EF adapter. So all those lovely EF and EF lenses, EFS lenses, sorry, that you have in your kit bag, you're going to be able to chuck on the front of this camera and use away just like a native lens. Uh, on top of that, they have another adapter, which is the same configuration, just with one of these new fangled control rings on. So you can use this control ring to change things like ISO, aperture, shutter speed, uh, and it gives that functionality to your old existing EF lenses. And finally, we have the drop-in filter adapter. So there's going to be two variants of this, one with a circular polarizer filter, and the other with an ND, a variable ND filter, with a range of 1.5 to 9 stops. So obviously for videographers, this is going to be a great addition to their kit bag. So overall, I think Canon have made a really strong start in the full frame mirrorless camera game. There's a few features that perhaps people uh, are going to have issue with, like the lack of a dual card slot and the, uh, the video features perhaps not being quite as highly spec as some people were hoping. But don't let that dissuade you. This is a really good camera. There's a whole bunch of roadshows going on around the country. Our nearest one is in the New Forest on the 13th of September. Uh, we urge you to get along to it just to give the camera a go. Get it in your hand and see what it's like. Um, there's also uh, going to be an evening touch and try event in the store coming up soon. Keep an eye on our website for that. Now, the camera and the lenses will be hitting the shelves the 9th of October, so uh, not long at all. But if you want to get on the list, we are accepting pre-orders now. Head over to our website, hit the banner on the homepage and place your pre-order. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.